The Cubs make another edition of their offseason. Find out who it is and where he will help on a Monday episode. Our Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Cubs. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Pleased to be with you for a Monday episode. Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, and more on the audio side. And shout out to the YouTube peeps listening and watching on there as well. Sam and I are lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. And today with the Northsiders is yet another free agent signing, the uh, number eight by my count, and we'll go over uh, kind of the the, the offseason as a whole for a bit as well. Sam, hope you are continuing to be on the mend as uh, I have felt better throughout the weekend. I will say the the sunshine has given me a a, a much-needed jolt and and definitely some February warmth. I can't say the same. We are now two days from pitchers and catchers reporting Mm. to spring training. On Friday afternoon, the Cubs signed right-handed reliever Michael Fulmer. Fulmer first emerged in the show as one of the most promising starting pitchers in the game. Also winning the Rookie of the Year 2016 All-Star appearance in 17 and has since uh, the last few years made the transition uh, to the bullpen. Spent majority of his career with the Tigers, was traded last year at the deadline to the Twins, and finished 2022 with a 3.39 ERA in 67 games. The Cubs had another proven major league piece, Sam. What were your first thoughts when the deal was announced? First of all, I apologize to everybody. I sound poor. Um, I, I feel much better than I sound, so, so no concerns there. I, I should be on the mend here. Shortly, uh, a couple days behind you, uh, was really excited about the Fulmer ad. Uh, sent you a nice text midday on Friday. Mm-hmm. I actually know Michael Fulmer's game fairly well uh, just because he was on my fantasy team. Uh, he's, like you said, kind of a, a, an interesting career path. Uh, outstanding his rookie year as a starter, kind of loses it, becomes a really good reliever. Last year, he, he was doing some good things for Detroit, got traded to Minnesota, wasn't as good in Minnesota, but a late-inning reliever, and he possesses late-inning stuff. Uh, I, I was, I was you know, tweeting with some people and, and messaging with some people after the deal uh, in, our, in our community of listeners, mm-hmm. and, and I said he, he, he slots right in into the top two or three stuff in this bullpen, wow. uh, depending on how much you value Alzale out of the bullpen because he could throw really hard, he's right there. He's got a sinker. That's his That's his go-to pitch that averages close to 95 miles an hour, but in big spots, it'll get up to 96, 97. Uh, he's, got, he's got really good, sharp breaking stuff. Uh, and it's one of those moves that if the Cubs are going to be a really good team, he's one of those guys you could see just having a monster season because he's – he has he has the tools to be a monster reliever. He he's one of those guys you watch in October. You and I are watching a playoff game or talking or something, and we go, "Man, the Yankees." There's another guy that throws 97 with a wicked breaking pitch, right? He's yes. he's one of those guys. Um, he, he he's good. It's a really good ad, and you know I know we're going to talk about the bullpen and big picture stuff, but when you add in what they added, it's it's a really good ad. I was surprised. He would have been probably at the top of my list, maybe with uh, Matt Moore. And uh, I'm happy they got him. Yeah, he was at, at the top of the list. He was a top 50 free agent by, by MLB trade rumors before the offseason started. Do we know what he got um, paid? No. Fangraphs before the offseason projected one year at three M's. Yeah, it's probably a little more um, than that. So if, if, if it's that, that's that's – Sounds reasonable to me. I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, and and I know that you know in real time the reaction was very positive, and and I think it should be. I think it's warranted. I didn't see them 
necessarily going for a right-hander just based on their mix and the battle and the competition that's going to happen in camp. But I also think that at this point for the Cubs, if you have a chance to add someone that's going to help your team and, and could be a large part to that mix and just overall bolster a, a bullpen that did have some question marks, even though you're intrigued by some of the names and you know someone will likely emerge. The Cubs have had success there. We've talked about that many times. Right. But to add a player like Fulmer is is a is a major addition for for this part of the calendar. Uh, to be only days right. and hours away from spring training, an impact. I did that. not expect that, and I I thought that if it was a bullpen addition, it was going to be a uh, lefty. And since Fulmer signed, Andrew Chafin signed with the Diamondbacks. Um, and Matt Moore is still out there, Brad Hand, Will Smith. So we'll, we'll see where, where everybody ends up by Wednesday or by the end of this week would be my guess. Um, but yeah, very, very solid addition. And, and he's the eighth addition, Sam, of, of the winter. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to get to that one second. I just want to make one quick point. Um, don't, overreact to the fact that they don't may not have enough lefties because the way they're constructed tend their, to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying not to you. I'm saying to, to yeah. our listeners, you, you could do whatever you want. It's your show. Uh, <laughs> the, the lefties, you got to remember the three batter minimum changes that a lot. It does your need for lefties plus mm -hmm. Keegan Thompson, potentially Samson, potentially I even though I don't think so are going to be pitching in bulk. So, Right. Your, your goal is is to get to the eighth or ninth inning with Boxberger, potentially Fulmer, potentially Alzali, and those are going to be your guys regardless. So if, if Thompson or whoever it is eats up two, three innings in the middle, it kind of takes away a, a, right. a lead for a lefty, and Hughes is going to have his own inning. So yep. I, I guess I, I, I'm not really that concerned about it. Um, most teams, most teams always have a you know a righty and a lefty coming off the bench, so. It is what it is. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, all I wanted to say about the offseason is this. There is, and you have it flashing if you're watching on YouTube, I have seen some great rebuttals and devil's, devil's advocate replies when people when, when we do a show about the Cubs having a good offseason. Hey, don't confuse activity with production. They're just trying to fool you and getting a lot of names in there, but eventually they're, not, they're just not going to be that good. And, and mm. that's... And that's fair, and, and, and I see that perspective. But when you break down these moves, Matthew, the only one that they made where you could confidently say there's a chance he doesn't really help you that much is Hosmer. I, I, I mean, Swanson, right. Swanson speaks for himself. Bellinger, we, we've talked about it probably 3,622 times on this show, the need for a defensive center fielder. I know Jamison Tyone is not that that sexy strikeout guy you're looking for, but Jamison Tyone helps out probably every single rotation in baseball. Maybe on Houston he's a fifth starter, but he's still an asset. Okay, Definitely. Mancini brings power to the table. Boxberger uh, uh, is is an asset as a reliever. He was a late inning reliever for the Brewers. We know how good their bullpens were. We just discussed Fulmer. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, bringing Smiley back brings depth. You know the catchers they needed. Everything that they did, I think, made them marginally better outside of probably Swanson, which made them a lot better. And when you start adding up the win total, it's just it's just almost impossible for me, knock on wood, health to see this team with these additions not at least be in the low 80s. So I give the Cubs credit. I understand what they're trying to do at this point. They're trying to kind of have their cake and eat it too, where being competitive at the major league level while letting these young guys develop. But I think they're going to be competitive this year. And, and they've they've added a lot of pieces. And whether you want them to add more or different ones, I don't think you can argue and say, hey, they're not going to be any better. That, that To me, I just don't understand that rationale. I, I, I If I'm wrong, I'll be very depressed, but I don't think I'm going to be. Yeah, I, I don't see a path to them not being better. Right. FanDuel has them at 75 and a half. Fangraphs released their tier power rankings for the first time this weekend. Has the Cubs at 78. Yeah. Uh, so a, a tick higher than than 75 and a half. But you know, you you play the game of of just uh scorekeeping. And you know, last year it was 
you know, Michael Rucker. This year it's Michael Fulmer. Right. And last year it was Rafael Ortega. This year it's Cody Bellinger. So I'm excited for this group to potentially knock down the projections and the human element to actually come into play. Yeah. Let's by, by, by get September. onto the field. Okay. And, and, and do some damage for crying out loud. Health too. Health, health, health. Health. Yes. Let's go over the bullpen situation now with the additional Fulmer and who in there could be potentially an under the radar guy that was in that list of free agent signings that is coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the number one sports book in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets. Win or lose at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel the official sportsbook partner of Locked On Cubs. Welcome back into Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. As we exit football season, we have, uh, in my mind, officially entered baseball season. Two days yes, to pitchers and catchers. Especially with Only this a weather. couple of weeks away from the first spring training game. And uh, we're only a month and a half away from opening day. There's now five locks in the bullpen for March 30th, Sam. And I have those locks given that Adrian Sampson is going to be elevated to the rotation uh, to open the campaign because Kyle Hendricks is, is taking his time, uh, right. which is fine. Alzali, this is just ABC order. Alzali, Boxberger, Fulmer, Hughes, and Thompson. And uh, there's now eight relievers because there's 13 total pitchers, 13 position players on an MLB roster. So there's going to be three spots up for grabs. We'll get to that uh, in a minute. But if in terms of locks and we've had, <clears throat> I, I would like to say a, a leading conversation on uh, floor versus ceiling and sure, the, sure. the combinations of the 2023 Cubs, you know, the floor of this group is very, firm and it's been risen a hundred percent high high floor yeah and i would say the group has a high ceiling Agreed. and you know i al's a lie the, the first and last name on there is what does that for me a hundred percent but the three names in the middle are are good names and hughes is only entering his second year and prior to fulmer the cubs actually made an addition in the free agent market with boxberger a 34 th year old guy but one year, not even three M's. He was great the last two years up north. Um, he has a lot of career saves. If you want to try him in that committee too, we could get to that in a couple minutes. He has 82 of those. Um, he's been an all-star before. I would almost venture to say that Brad Boxberger, before Friday with the Fulmer signing, was the most under-the-radar signing of those seven or eight. He's a proven guy with a, a nice track record. You said it. Ausley and Thompson are ceiling raisers. Boxberger Berger, and Fulmer are floor raisers. Okay. Um, that's what it is. And then Hughes is, is – we'll, we'll see. This is a good group of locks. I, I, I agree with your, with your premise making this because I, I'm not a fan of the guy, but Rowan Wick's going to be there opening day. I, I really believe that. If he isn't. If he isn't, that would be really surprising to me, and I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, but I just, I just can't imagine that. And then it'll probably yeah, he's be on the forty a, man already. It'll probably be another lefty, and I know you're gonna, you're gonna flash probably that up here shortly. Um, 
Yeah, there's a couple lefties in the mix. Hopefully, my guy uh, uh, Ryan Barucki gets a chance, just because I, I, mm -hmm. you know, played ball with him growing up. Uh, but actually, you know, what, whatever works. Um, I think Michael Rucker is better than people think, and we know how I feel about lighter. So, like this group to me, like heading into the off season, and you never can predict the bullpen. You just never can. If one or two of these guys struggles, the whole thing gets messed up, right? Right. But on paper, heading into spring training, this is a check for me. This bullpen to me is good enough to win with. Uh, yes. We'll see. We'll see about the starting pitching. We'll see about the offense, the power. But the bullpen to me has been not only checked, but but with an exclamation point after Friday signing. I don't know if you agree or not. I'd like to hear what you think about. Who who has the lead, you know, with these spots? Because you got to assume they're not going to go into in, into the into the year with one lefty in there. They're going to put another one of these guys in there. It's a lefty. Um, I wonder who who it's going to be. I think this is really the only spot on the roster where there's going to be genuine a competition. There'll be a battle, which is good, by the way. I yeah, like it's good. It gives me something to watch, right? Like I, I don't like yes. this whole. I don't like this whole thing. Mervis could hit 855 with 20 home runs in the spring, and he will not be there. Well, then that's not fun for me. I, I want to watch somebody we play themselves. We could have fun on, with it, yeah. I, I want to watch somebody play themselves on the ball club. Yeah, and I, I you know, Barucki and, and Elias are the lefties there. Um, there's even a couple more lefties that aren't even on this list. You know, the, the depths of the bullpen – and the invitees and the the minor leaguers that it goes beyond sheets of you know beyond the notebook if you will but it, if i um, had to if i had to guess i i was a, a travel baseball player growing up so i don't remember if i had to guess my numbers against Ryan Brucky from Mundelein oh, faced yeah. him, i faced him a lot i faced him a lot i can recall one hit it was a big hit it was a walk off hit but i think i was probably about one for 20-ish, uh, maybe one for 15 with a very, very small amount of contact. Uh, weak, <laughs> weak ground balls to the right side and a bunch of strikeouts. Maybe I'm shorting myself. Maybe it was two or three hits, but it wasn't many. And I just remember, because it is kind of fun, and, and Matt, you obviously have more experience playing with, with future big leaguers than I do. I'm talking about when I was like 12 years old here. Mm -hmm. But it is funny to reminisce because he was the only guy we'd play. And I played basketball against him too. But in baseball, he was the only guy where I, I remember our team would just genuinely be intimidated to face him. And that's, right. kind, that's kind of what it is to be a big leaguer, right? Like that's just the that's level. Cool. You know yeah. more about that than I do with, with some of your friends and stuff. But it's just like, like there was like, oh, God, we have to face this guy today. And here I am hitting ninth. There's a dread. Yeah, and I'm hitting ninth, and, and, and the at-bats weren't long. Well, then I think we should pursue a path to making Ryan Barucki our guy in this group and making the club. I think that would be fun throughout spring. Yeah, hopefully so. He, he's, he, he's had a nice, a nice run. He's good against lefties. He throws, you know, throws about 94, 96. He had a really, if I remember correctly, wow. he had a really good resurgence in high school. He was dominant when we were growing up, slowed down. And then like by junior, senior year, he was, he was really, really tough. Motherline was always good at baseball. Always. Yeah, still are. Three of these names are going to make it. I, I think it is going to be a lefty, so let's go with Barucki. Um, You know, Merriweather, the pickup from the Blue Jays on waivers. People like him. Has pitch shapes and options that the Cubs haven't, you know, had as much of. Um, you know, Mark Leiter Jr., I think, could be, in his own right, a, a weapon. Um, Estrada, I think, for, for, for the sake of his development, we'll see. Uh, but he might open the year in Des Moines. And, you know, Rowan Wick has been around the longest in a Cubs uniform by far of the, these names. Um, but I'm not sure if that matters. Estrada's you know, probably got the best. That's better than. Estrada's probably got the best pure stuff out of Yeah, he does. Yeah. Uh, but you he know. was, Jeremiah Estrada was the, the owner of the two Cubs pitches that were over that certain velocity. <laughs> right. Uh, that we went over uh, last week. So. All right, a lot of competition for the bullpen and a lot of questions that we can ask in terms of Cubs trivia in the bullpen as well. And we're going to do that coming up next. 
Today's episode is also brought to you by Built Bar. Looking for a mm. delicious treat that's healthy but actually tasty? Then Built Bar is the snack for you. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. Unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. And they have 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, a whopping 17 grams of protein. Not only can you order on Built.com as always, but you can now get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. I know my dad and Uncle Tom have been sending me photos and reports live from local Walmart. Shout out to those two men. About that. And you can head to your nearest store today, walk into the snack section, pick up a box of four bars and cookies and cream or double chocolate or coconut puffs. So Built Bar at Built.com, Walmart or Sam's Club and try Built Bar today. Can I just say something before you embarrass me with this trivia again? You, you mentioned okay. your, you mentioned your father and your uncle. What a the, the what a what a, what a great family the Cozies are. You know what I mean? I mean I've been growing up with the co. Yeah, I feel like I'm like a like like an adopted Jewish cozy. Uh, uh, and it's just <laughs> it's such an iconic name. I I love when I see see Uncle Tom in the comments. Nick's watching every episode. Your father. I mean it's just. The cozy community. Check them out, folks. Well, thanks for saying that, Sam. That's the best. It's the best. That. If you and I, think, I always say this. If you don't like the cozies, you got a problem. And I think we're going to have my dad give some live reports, like maybe just two or three minutes from Sloan in a few weeks. Oh, it, what, is he go? He's going there. Yeah. Oh, and and to see to see your uncle, your other yeah, uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. My Uncle Mike and Aunt Kathy and uh Beautiful. And they're gonna he's gonna be down there for, for a whole week. So that's gonna be nice. Oh, that's gonna be a great trip. If you enjoy the show, tell somebody about it, send a tweet, make a Facebook post, put the link in an email, or simply tell a Cubs fan the next time you see them as we continue the journey here with Locked On Cubs. And we continue what we've been doing here with some trivia. Ugh. And Sam, I'd like to know who is the only Cubs pitcher. Mm-hmm who recorded both 50-plus wins and 50-plus saves. Is Ryan a, Dempster. Oh, uh, you're right. Oh, I didn't even know we were doing multiple choice. Yeah. Wow, that was fast. I don't, I told you I don't like – the. I, I, if, I, if I know the answer, I know it. If I don't, I don't like to guess it because yeah. then I start thinking multiple choice. So, to me, that comes up. It's got to be Ryan Dempster. You're now, right. Was, you're right. Was Dempster the closer – he was the closer. It wasn't 08 because that was Kerry Wood, but he was the closer during one of the cup. Was it 07? Was he the closer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. O- a, 08, Dempster was a starter. He was right. He was a closer before he was a starter. Yeah. Let me, let me pull that up. Oh, eight. Oh yeah. Cause 08, he started game one of the, uh, of the NLDS. I was at that ball game. James Loney, the grand slam. We lost. Um, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll never forget. If you, if you go back and watch that full game, you can see my dad with his head, in his in his legs for three straight innings. Oh boy. Uh let me let me just look that up because that bothers me. I don't know the inning. Yeah, so 07, he had 28 saves. So he was the closer for the Cubbies 05, 06, 07, and then 08, he got converted to a start. He was 17 and 6 in 2008 with a 296 finish six, finish six in the Cy Young was an all-star. That was the year the Cubs had all those all-stars and just totally didn't have it in game one of that series. Go, go look at the box yeah. score of that he must've walked five, six guys. He, he was, he was flirting with disaster the entire game. And then fifth inning two Oh Cubs early, early DeRosa home run to right field. And James Loney comes up. I had a bad feeling bases loaded grand slam series ended right there. I think I had a, a plate of nachos. I almost had to clear off just in case I got sick. I was just a total wreck that night. Me and my dad, my dad, my dad and I had so many problems getting to the game. Our transportation was messed oh, up. Yeah, it, 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 it was a bad just omen. No, and that was the day. Real quick, I, I'm not, not to rem, over reminisce, but that was the day that that series. So the Cubs got swept. I'm sure you recall that they lost game two. Zambrano was on the mound. They made 940 errors in the first inning. And then they got dominated in game three. Ted Lilly never even got a chance to pitch in that series. That's that a was, joke. That was the day my father sold our tickets when they sweat, got swept. Wow. He couldn't do it anymore. He couldn't take the pain. He had, a, he had a little, I, he's going to kill me for saying this. If he, if he's, if he listens to this episode, he had a little tear 
run down his eye. I remember we were watching. I think they got swept. I could be wrong. I think it was a Saturday night, and then they put, and then and then the Bears beat the Lions the next day. Fact check me on this, somebody. And and my dad got a little bit excited for that, but he had a little tear roll down his eye wow. on a Saturday night, and he goes, Sam. Do you care? I, I can't watch this anymore. Because the year before, my dad went. I didn't go game three when they got swept by the D-backs. He just couldn't take it. They won a ton of games in 07 and 08. They must have won almost 200 games. Yeah. And well, uh, 08, 08 was, I think, like 97 wins in 08. Yeah. I could be wrong. And and they went, oh, they promptly went 0, for, 0 and 6 in the postseason. Yeah, 07, they only won 85. It was a weak division okay. year that year. But 08, 08, they won 97. So, yeah, no, 08 was the 08, 08 felt like, hey, this is going to be the year. Don't you remember that Dodger team, too, that had like the older Manny Ramirez on it that just killed yes. us? Derek he hit Lowe. a home run off his shoe. Yeah. Derek in one Lowe of those games. was the opening day starter, Loney, Andre Ethier, all those guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it all worked out in the end. But I just thought, I, I, you know, me, sometimes I, I get on a little bit of a tangent. No, that was, that was uh, good to reminisce sometimes. And finally, despite the season being only 60 games, six oh. different pitchers recorded a save during the 2020 season. Oh. Can you name them? Yeah, let me just get my mind there. Okay. Kimbrel. Yep. Kimbrel saved two ball games. I'm trying to think who was there. Uh, who, who I'm trying to think who took there. There's somebody that took over because Kimber was terrible in the beginning of the year. So I'm trying to think who took over. Uh, was was Tapera there yet? Brian Tapera saved one game. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't Tapera's not the guy I'm thinking of though. I'm missing the main guy. Um, just sometimes it takes me a second to get my brain. There's two over. more that saved only one game. By the way, and then Tepera, and then two, two What's others. the number? Um. Eight is the highest number Eight's here. The highest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight, That's... four, two, one, one, one. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to just. I'm just trying to just get there. Um, give, give me, give me. Let me, let me make sure I get the eight guy. Give me the guys that got one. Andrew Chafin and oh. Kyle Ryan. Oh, geez, I would have picked that. I would have picked that out of a hat. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm blanking here. We just talked get... about one of the names already on this show. Well, Robertson came came way later, so it wasn't him. Um, He's in the mix for this year. He's in the mix. Oh, Rowan Wick. He saved four games. Yeah, Rowan Wick. I knew that, but I'm, I I know he wasn't. The, I'm missing the main guy. The main guy. He was only this only one year, 2020. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna get there. We got we we got about a minute and a half. Give me a second. Um, Let me know if you want a hint. Yeah, a hint would be great. Milwaukee. Milwaukee's the hint. Oh, this is this is it's I just my mind's just not with that 2020 team. Uh Tapera, Jafin, Kimbrell. Milwaukee. Alliteration. Where, Milwaukee's where we got them from. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Just, just, ah, uh, just, just, just forget it. I don't want to, it is what it is. Jeremy uh, Jeffress. Oh, Jeffress. Right, right. Of course. Jeffress, Jeffress is such a lost guy because he was just unbelievable for the, he was the best Cubs pitcher that whole year. And then yeah, he was good right, right towards the end, towards the end. He completely kind of lost it. And then that was it. That's yeah. right. I, it's the 2020 year. I'm not really bad at myself for that. That's that was a weird oh, you one. Did, Ky you did okay. Kyle Ryan, man, I wouldn't have got that. I I never was a fan of that guy. We would have been here for a while. No, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have got that. Jeffress, though, yeah, because don't you remember early in the year, Kimbrel, because he had that resurgence in 2021. He was just awful in the beginning of the terrible. year, and so they bad. came in and Jeffress became the guy. Yep. Yep. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button on all your favorite Locked On Cubs content. Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your pods. And you can drop us a text this week, 312-834-4634. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now make your second Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep 
on the MLB Stars of Tomorrow. Locked on MLB Prospects, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Well, a fun Monday show in the books. A lot of bullpen, a lot of trivia, a lot of reminiscing. We hope everybody has a great week with us here on the program. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked on Cubs.